Insurance is a real problem around the country and it's for different reasons. And when the problem spreads to you and you either can't get insurance or the cost of the insurance drastically increases, then be prepared for the value of your property to also take a hit. It's affecting properties and homeowners all around the country. Two of the biggest states that are being affected are California for environmental reasons and Florida for fraud reasons. Meanwhile, pretty much every condo in the country has been affected from the tragic kind of building that collapsed a couple of years ago in Florida. More on that in just a couple seconds because it's affecting everyone. Yes, even people here in Massachusetts. State Farm, which is the nation's largest homeowners insurance company, actually stopped accepting new applications for policies in California. Allstate, they paused any new homeowners condo as well as commercial insurance in Florida as well. There were and there are going to be more to follow. That I can promise. Now, these insurance companies have calculated the risk and realized that the risk in California gets just too high to be sound for their business model. Now, State Farm, in their announcement, mentioned that too many buildings were being destroyed by climate catastrophes and inflation. It's making it too expensive to, to rebuild those properties that they insure. Now, obviously, we're talking about wildfires when they say climate catastrophes, but I haven't heard of too many wildfires in Florida and Louisiana. These states' environmental and thereby insurance issues are happening due to flood risk, potential hurricane risk, and the big one being fraud risk. So the insurance company's risk is increasing, which means that the cost of insuring those assets, well, they need to increase with it. And there's the rub. In California, for example, insurance premiums can only go up 7% per year. This has made it so that insurers in the state have stopped writing policies. A CNBC article brought up a couple who had owned a house for 18 years. Then Allstate, they sent them a non-renewal notice for their insurance. They had one company say that they could insure them, but for $12,000 per year. And this 12 grand was roughly six times their previous annual premium. Now, making matters worse, this couple was retired and they were living on a fixed income. So they may need to actually sell that house. But here's where insurance is so important. First Street Foundation has done research on this matter and has concluded that the moment an individual gets a non-renewal letter from their insurance company, they essentially lose 12% of their property's value. 12%. I mean, that kind of makes sense. If you are buying a property and the least affordable insurance is $1,000 a month, you're going to build that into your monthly budget and thereby the budget that you are going to be willing to pay for that house. In Florida, yes, you have hurricanes, but it's the fraud that's killing them and they have stepped up with new laws to try to combat this. It's roofing scams, to be exact. This scam works like this. Contractors, they knock on the doors offering to inspect a homeowner's roof for storm damage. They then say they can help get a roof replacement covered by insurance. They persuade homeowners to sign away their rights to file the claim themselves. That's the big one right there. The contractors then file fraudulent damage claims. And when insurance companies balk, well, the contractors, they sue them. The insurance companies usually settle all the disputed claims for many times that original claim. And most of the money actually goes to the contractor's lawyers in the form of their contingency multiplier. And some lawyers, they file hundreds of these types of lawsuits a year. Lawyers. Yep, the homeowner got a new roof, but everyone pays for it through higher insurance rates. But the other issue in Florida was that tragic building collapse, which was affected every condo association around the country. The first place where it affects the condo association and management company is in the paperwork. The bank, through the government agencies, they're going to require the management company or condo association to say that there is no deferred maintenance. Now, only an idiot would go and say that. That's literally putting them in the position to get sued down the line. So that leads us to the complicated workaround, which is meeting minutes in a full condo proctal exam. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, financial examination there are two more areas where it really affects you because at the end of the day the bankers they're making it work minimal reserves is the killer for a lot of associations fannie mae and freddie mac issued new guidelines that require condo boards to maintain a 10 percent or greater reserve line item for the future maintenance now what this means is that condo associations have had to pass special assessments or jack up condo fees in order to get the reserve account spruced up to the minimal standards and what happens if they don't? Well, then the government entities will not actually back mortgages in those condo complexes, which will in turn 
create downward pressure on home pricing. Oh, but there's more. In 2022, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac also adjusted their minimum insurance requirements for master insurance policies. Under the new requirements, the maximum deductible percentage for any master insurance policy is 5%. Anything above this percentage, including deductibles for wind and hail, may put an association in the unavailable status for conventional loans. And this just happened to one of my buyers. The condo association, they actually lost their insurance. They went to the marketplace to get new insurance and could only get a reasonable insurance rate if the deductible was 10%. But how much would a condo owner really understand if a management company or condo association came to you and let you know about this change? Well, sadly, you're going to quickly understand if you're one of those people that are looking to sell their unit. Because the only type of loan that was available to my client was a portfolio loan. The difference, you ask? Well, it's just a mere 2% increase in the interest rate for him. A buyer is going to factor higher borrowing costs into their budget, which will then affect how much they're willing to pay for the house, thereby creating downward pricing pressure on condos. Like I said, the insurance issue is an issue all over the country, not just in California and Florida. My name's Jeff Cho. I appreciate you keeping me in mind. Should you be thinking about buying or selling a new home? Go online to youtuberealestateagent.com or find all of my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.